Hey guys, welcome back to another book review. In the last one, we took a look at this uh, Mobile Suit Special Works, which actually says Moby Suit Special Works. I didn't notice that at first, but some of you guys pointed that out to me. And today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Volume 2. Now this one is also Moby Suits, but this one is Paintbrush Draw. So a little bit different techniques and things that are going to be going through uh, in this book. So we'll take a look at this, and once again, just want to say thank you to USA Gundam Store for sending these to me to uh, share with you guys and to check out and absorb the information within. And yeah, so last time I checked, uh, Volume 1 is still sold out for the time being, but they do have Volume 2 here in stock on USA Gundam Store, so you can check that out there. You can buy it there if you want. Uh, use my coupon code there, Zakorelius10, to save 10% on this. Uh, well, let's see what we can see in here, inside here. So here in the back, a little preview of some of the stuff inside the Sazabi, which we can see on the front, obviously, the new Gundam, and a just a cannon there as well with some cool caution striping. So opening it up here, we can see an advertisement for uh, MIG Ammo. That's uh, MIG uh, Paints. MIG Ammo is a line of paints. The first book, I think, was sponsored by Vallejo because they were using a lot of Malay uh, Vallejo paints, but this one, I'm guessing, maybe is uh, sponsored by MIG or at least partially so, because they're going to be featuring using some uh, MIG paints in this guide, it would seem. Oh, but here on the first page, I can see there are some Vallejo paints here as well, so I guess it's just kind of a, a mix of both, maybe what they're going to be using in the guide. But here we can see some of the stuff, the Sazabi, the Justa Cannon, the new Gundam, a regular Justa here, as well as a Garazulu and a crab pod, so that's pretty cool. I'm really happy to see that featured in here because I actually have a, a couple of those kits that I need to get around to painting. They're really cool kits, but I think you need to do something like really unique with them. I just haven't really had any good ideas yet. So here it looks like they're talking about uh, environmental protection of, I guess that's just because it's using acrylics and acrylics uh, aren't as toxic as lacquer paints, so I guess that that is of course one uh, good point of using acrylic paints, so they're just using uh, these colors here, which you can see on there for the base colors for the Gerazulu here, which I guess is maybe going to be the first feature in the book, so let's check it out. Here's just some basic tools and supplies, some brushes, it is giving you the brush sizes here, one, two, three, uh, triple zero, double zero, and zero, and then just some flathead brushes there, some other airbrush cleaner, air brush thinner, retarder, just a whole bunch of different materials that you should gather, I guess, if you do want to follow this guide exactly. So our first kit is the high grade Just a Cannon, so this is not the P Bandai Master Grade kit, but the high grade, you can see they've got a picture of the box up here in this corner. And I gotta say, it looks pretty nice, it's not really to my particular taste. Just some of the color design choices and things with this kit are just not really uh, to my taste. And this is one of those ones where when you can see it in really close detail and everything is where you can see all the little imperfections and stuff. And the build does seem to have a fair amount of imperfections, so like just some of the, the lining. Uh, this caution stripe lining, I'm not sure how well you guys are going to be able to see that, but I can see here, unless the, the lines aren't very straight, there's a bit of imperfection there. A lot of these little bits are like hand painted, these striping parts it looks like, the striping on the knees and then this little, these little like striping bits in the elbow joints are hand painted and not evenly. Uh, so that's just going to be my little critique of the build. But, uh, of course, let's just see what kind of techniques and things are showing off here. It looks better on the back, though, for sure. The balance of colors is a little bit uh, better handled here on the back, uh, in my personal opinion. Here you can see some more just photos of that. There's a whole bunch more sample photos and more sample photos. And then we get into the actual process, so... These are the kind of pictures that I really like to see, the work in progress photos, where you can see, like, the base kit, and you can tell where all the parts added are. So you can tell like all these little white parts and little gray parts, which are the option parts and things like that that he added onto the kit. Uh, you can easily identify where all those are. So that's what's cool to see. Uh, where on the on the finished kit, you can you can pick those out, but it's cool to see them in the work in progress photos. And then here's just showing you about uh, priming, priming with a spray can. So and then how the kit is going to look uh, when it's all primed. So comparing the two, how it looks just straight out of the box, um, bare plastic with all the extra atom parts and things like that added on. And then how it looks after a nice coat of primer, much, much better. In his primer stay here, I, I really like a lot of the modifications and everything that he's added onto it. Uh, it's just a lot of the color choices I think that I end up uh, ultimately just not really agreeing with. So you can see first here he's painting on the yellow base for the caution striping. And yeah, if you've ever tried painting yellow, you know that it's not an easy color to paint. It takes a few coats, so I'm not sure how many coats he ended up actually having to do. But I'm sure it was quite a few to get this nice bright yellow. 
And then once he did, here he's put on strips of masking tape for the striping and then just painting the black in there for the striping and I'm guessing that's where it kind of went wrong where maybe the strips weren't exactly straight or they weren't uh, pressed down all the way and that's why you get some of the lining looking a little bit uh, inconsistent. But anyway, once that's done, then he's moving on with some other colors here, just the kind of base colors of the mobile suit. Getting those on, doing some more just a little detail painting and everything, just doing the whole thing by hand with acrylics here it looks like. Painting all these little details and things like that it just takes a lot of coats, especially when you're doing light colors like that. That's one reason why I don't particularly like uh, using acrylics and hand painting with acrylics especially. Again, yes, they are ecologically friendly, so, so finishing up some steps, starting to put together some sections of the kit. Again, it's just a lot of detail painting here basically. And then detail painting, detail painting, then the legs are done, and then just kind of going through the same processes here for the body. So what I'm gathering maybe was the, the focus for this build, or kind of what was the assignment for the builder was to show off uh, just about hand painting and detail painting, how you can go in and paint a lot of detail. So that's why they, ultimately the, the kit ended up looking a certain way is because it was kind of intentional to show off a lot of different detail paintings so that's why it has a lot of details I think it ends up ultimately looking a little bit too messy in my opinion so anyway it's just kind of going on looks like pretty much just a lot of the same thing just detail painting here showing a lot of steps of that which could be useful I guess if this is something that you wanted to do uh, or if you are going to be doing like masking you can pretty much just kind of assume a kind of similar Roll and then it's kind of all done here, it looks like, getting onto the weapons and things like that. Uh, the backpack parts, and it seems to just be kind of all most of the same thing. And then the finish, like here for example, there's the gun. It's just too many colors for me, I think. And then giving it a coat of gloss top coat, and then doing the decals. So putting all the decals on, and then doing some panel lining. Personally, I would do panel lining first because I wouldn't want to have any panel lining accidents ruin any of my decals. So that's why I usually do panel lines first and then decals after that. I think probably most people do the same, but it's interesting that he did it in reverse this time. Then we get a few more shots of the finished kit. And there you have your uh, paint list there at the bottom. You can see exactly what paints were used of uh, Vallejo acrylics there. And the next thing here is the Master Grade New Gun Number Ka. So this one I think looking much better in my opinion, uh, but it is pretty much sticking to the standard colors. It's not taking a whole lot of creative liberty. Uh, with this, he is looking like he's painting some of the panels in a little bit different colors from maybe what they would be straight out of the box, but as far as I can tell, uh, it's nothing too crazy in terms of uh, vari variations to the colors of the original kit. So again here we've just got a whole bunch of sample images which are great because they give you a lot of good looks around the kit. You can see all the details really nice just from all these different angles and different poses and things like that uh, around the kit. And here we can see the kit just snapped up together without any painting done before he starts work on it. And then it looks like he's using a white primer for this instead of uh, gray. So it's going to have a little bit different look to it. I wish there was a, a full shot of the Gundam. You can see just some parts of it there. I wish there was a full shot of it just all primed in white. That looked pretty cool. But uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be following the same kind of steps. It's just hand painting with acrylics here. Uh, all the details and all the different panels. So... Having that all white base for the armor parts just makes it that much easier to paint just different tones of white over that because then you're just basically adjusting the, the color of what you've already got there for the base. So he's just painting all of that. Looks like maybe he did do a little bit of scribing on the kit. Uh, scribing a few extra little panels around here and there. I think like, <clears throat> especially on the thighs and on the feet, it looks like there, you can see some painting the details in the hands, so that's one reason why I don't like these articulated hands, they're harder to paint, uh, but he's got those painted, uh, painting the different panels on the shoulders, painting in the yellow details, and then using some metallics here for some of the thruster details, and it's just all kind of more of the same, detail painting, the torso, and the head, and the head parts, it looks like for these yellow parts, he may have just not painted those, uh, or maybe they are, yeah maybe they are painted yellow, uh, maybe those are sprayed, it looks like, possibly. But the end result is looking really, really nice. I have to say the all the different color tones and everything going on uh, does look pretty good. And just more here painting the weapons and all just kind of following the same steps of different color patterns and uh, putting on the decals and then some more fin uh, finished photos here of the finished kit. 
it was quite nice. And then the color table there at the bottom, if you want to uh, check that, you can use that. And then next we have the Sazui Verka. So a lot of nice big photos of this guy using a lot of different shades of red here. But as you know, with this kit, all those different shades of red do come together very nicely uh, for this big kit with a lot of different panels and just armor uh, panels and armor separation all over the place. So you have a lot of really nice big shots of that with a lot of nice uh, crisp clear detail and everything. So you can see that nice and closely. Here's uh, some shots here showing the inner frame as well. So you can see all the different color tones he's using on the inner frame. So that looks quite nice. So again, here we have just the base kit before painting and then just kind of uh, stripping everything down and he just kind of separated the parts into sections here, it looks like, in this kind of container. That's a cool idea. And keep everything nice and organized. So he's just painting up all the different details on the inner frame first. Uh, just kind of starting with the base gray and then adding all the different color tones here and there, highlights uh, with some silver and some gold inside, some thruster bells, a little bit of red highlights in there in the joints and the pistons. And yeah, you're gonna be left with a pretty cool looking inner frame. So just kind of going on and on with more inner frame painting, I'm just gonna be kind of fast forwarding a little bit through this. Uh, of course, if you get this book, you can look at all of these in much, much more detail. But just for the sake of video, it's all kind of pretty much the same thing. Then we're finally getting into some armor painting. So he's just using multiple tones of red, as I said. So you can see there's the darker red, the kind of base red, and then a warm kind of orangish red here. So those are going to be kind of the three main tones, but I think you will probably use a, a few other different tones in there as well. Painting some more armor parts here for around the legs and the skirt parts and some more shoulder parts, uh, parts for the funnels, the shield, the rifle, and then of course all the beautiful Verka decals. So once those are on there, and then again is there a color guide here, so our colors for the frame and then colors for the armor are all listed there. Some more full finished photos. And then we're on to the high grade Jesta. So this one is just a kind of special ops kind of color scheme, I guess is kind of what he's going for there. And it looks like he's using a Kotobukiya MSG option parts there for that rifle. Pretty certain that that's what that is there. We'll, we'll be able to see in a minute. So again, we just got a, a lot of nice big full photos here of the finished kit first, here and here, and some Kotobukiya uh, effect parts for the beam saber there as well. So that seems to be what he's got there. So yeah, here's the base kit. Interesting part he's got added onto the backpack there. It looks like it's like a arm part or something from some other kit. Just like put on it to the backpack for some extra detail. But otherwise, not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of stuff changed on the kit. It would seem just the different weapons added onto it. So this one is going to be airbrushing at least for the primer. And we can see it's just gonna be hand brushing the colors. So again, it's just hand brushing kind of the base colors and then going in hand brushing in all the little details here and there around on the kit. Nice choice of colors for this. I like that kind of light sandy tan and gray mix. It looks pretty cool. So once that's done and then getting to the weapon and painting all the weapon all up, which looks quite nice as well. Um, and that's going on to the decals putting all the decals on that and then again here's our paint guide there at the bottom and then finished photos here and I'm noticing something falling out of the side here we'll take a look at that later Some more finished photos and then on to our gear Zulu so here's our high grade gear Zulu this one he did do a little bit of customizing on this as well so it's not just normal straight out of the box this one's also using some uh, a Kotobukiya weapon rifle there I believe it looks similar to the rifle that's included with the kit. I don't think it's the stock one though. It might be actually, and maybe it's just modified with some different parts. So let's see here. But well, there's some there's some things about this kit that I like it in general, but I gotta say the spikes on the front uh, front of the toes and the back of the heel, not really into that to be honest. Uh, I think that kind of really ruins it for me. But every, everything other than that, I do quite like of just the little modifications and things that he's done on the kit. The little kind of armor. Uh, extra armor flap there on the front of the ankle armor. I like that. That's cool. So just going through some detail shots there. And again, all right, so here we can see the weapon. So yeah, that is a, a Kotobukiya weapon, that rifle there, I'm sure. And then the shield part is just kind of a, a kit bashed shield there as well. And then you can see all the little option parts and things he's added on a few different places there. So the kit is getting all primed up with Mr. Surfacer and then just hand painted, brushing the main colors. 
and then hand brushing in the little details and like the little stripe around the thigh just using masking tape. Uh, for the thruster bells, looks like he's painting the inside yellow first and then the outside of that gray. So if you're wondering about painting the inside of thruster bells, that's one way that you can do it. Uh, and then just, yeah, more detail painting, detail painting, painting the sleeves markings, just hand painting that rather than doing a reverse wash. Uh, I've done that and it's not very fun. I would definitely recommend doing a reverse wash. I did that on my clear uh, Rosen Zulu. And yeah, it wasn't too bad on a clear kit, but yeah, a reverse wash is just much, much easier. So more detail painting, detail painting, detail painting. We have all those cool weapons, and then decals, and then the finished product. A few more photos of that, and our paint guide. And then onto our last kit in here, which is the only non-Gundam kit in these two books so far, is this Space, uh, space Pod Crabo, or Space Pod Crab 03. Anyway, like I said, it's a cool kit. I, I really need to get around to building this up and just at least doing a review for you guys just to show it off. But it's a quite interesting looking kit, so you can, as you can tell from the photos here. So it's cool they branched out and did something outside of Gundam for this. Because uh, this is also a cool way to show a little detail painting and thing like that because uh, this kit does have a lot of little details on there. It's a pretty small kit, uh, not too horribly large. So you can see how the kit looks just straight out of the box. It's cool how it has like these like middle, little mini tiny arms and then like another smaller little arm and it's two like big main arms. Very cool looking kit for sure. So he's just top coating the whole thing first for some reason there in a flat top coat. So I guess that's just to give it some texture because uh, that'll give it just a little bit rough, rougher texture to the plastic. And then just kind of going in and brushing everything in a base gray color. And then, you guessed it, going in and painting in some of those details here by hand. So hand painting all these little details and it looks really nice. I think this is probably one of my favorites from uh, from the book, the, the new Verka and the Sasabi Verka both look really nice, but I like this just because of how different it is. And so it's just painting all the little details in there. And then that kind of, this is just kind of some uh, extra like armor plate thing that comes with the kit that's is just supposed to be meant to, like, to use for like diorama or something like that if you want to be showing it sort of moving that part as if it were like installing that on some space station or something like that. So, uh, And for the orange parts, just painting those up in some base gray first and then again just painting all the details in after that. So all these little details, I love the, just the little white and red little line details and things like that around within the gray always looks very nice. And there is a little human figure like pilot included as well so he's just painted up that little pilot in its little space suit. And then again once that's all done applying some decals here with some mark setter looks like and then the finished product so very cool I like that quite a bit I'm actually gonna check that out I really need to get around to doing something with those kits, like I said. It comes with like two kits in a box, and I have two boxes, so actually I think I have four of them that I need to do something with. So here's the finished product, and then the paints are at the bottom. Uh, a little advertisement here, I guess, for the Keiko uh, Space Pod Crab. I wonder if that was maybe also a kind of uh, sponsor of this guy, and that's why they included it in here, maybe Keiko Hobby as a brand. Uh, maybe worked with them on that. So, And then here, uh, for some reason, is a nice big picture of the Gundam at Daiba, which is unfortunately not there anymore. So there's that, a uh, little bit, uh, something there about Universal Century possibly, and that's it. So no big, no like uh, wrap-up image at the end where it shows like all the kits that were featured in the book like all together in one image. That's unfortunate, I kind of liked that. But uh, yeah, so again, it's all kind of UC stuff, so if you're not a big fan of UC, uh, sorry. Here is just a uh, guide here. Okay, so this is a, a guide. This is pretty interesting. This is showing you some of the recommended colors for some different Gundam model kits. So these are all Vallejo paints. Uh, so I wonder why there was an adver advertisement at the front of the magazine for MIG ammo when they didn't actually use any MIG paints. If you remember here, they didn't actually use any MIG paints in the guide. I guess they just uh, bought that front advertisement space. But anyway, uh, so this is just recommending some different uh, Vallejo paints for different Gundam models. It tells you which one. It looks like these are mostly high grades. But some high grade UC kits. This looks to be just kind of all UC stuff. So yeah, this is all HGUC kits. Uh, so all HGUC except for... 
Yeah, I was wondering if that was maybe the real grade there, the Sharazaku, but maybe not. So, just a color guide for a bunch of popular HGUC kits. So that's pretty cool if you are using these Vallejo paints and you wanted to know about which colors to use for some of these kits. Here's a pretty good guide for that. So, uh, that's book two, where book one was uh, focusing on weathering and the different uh, weathering techniques of hand painting a kit and or airbrushing a kit and then doing the different weathering steps on it. This one obviously focused mostly on just detail painting. So again, I think this would be a really good guide for if you're wanting to kind of have some nice reference images for how you want to detail paint. If that's something that's kind of a little, a little bit difficult for you, it's hard to tell like which details you want to pick out and like how you want to separate the colors. Usually setting like the darker colors uh, farther back and then like the lighter colors farther forward so you can see like the most inner parts are dark. The thighs and the inner parts like darker parts of the chest. And then as you're kind of making your way forward like three-dimensionally it goes to like the regular red and then the outermost details are where you see just these little light bits of red. So that's a, a, a style that you will see used quite often as it does kind of just uh, visually look the best. If you were to do that in the opposite and have the light colors in the middle and then have the dark colors on the outside edge, it would give you a very, very much different look and may not be as appealing for most people. But hey, if it works, if it looks good to you, that's the most important part, but that is just kind of uh, some, a rule that people do tend to follow. So a cool book. Again, a lot of nice reference photos if you if you are interested in just kind of getting some inspiration, especially if you're working on one of these kits in that's actually featured in this book. You could definitely get a lot of good ideas out of that. Whether you are hand painting or not, you could obviously apply all of this style to doing this just as a brush paint or as a airbrushing as well. You just have to use more masking and things like that, which um, is more work, I guess, but it, it might be a little bit easier for you if you're just not really good at hand painting like me. So again, thank you to USA Gundam Store for this book. Thank you to you guys for watching and listening. And if you do have any other questions or comments about this, leave that down below. Again, it's all in Chinese. So if you want to use some sort of translator app for that, I'm sure you could do that. If there's like some step that you want to know exactly kind of what it's talking about, you could just try it out with the translating app. Uh, and that should work for you just if you have a smartphone. It shouldn't be too big of an issue. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey! Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam Store. Use that coupon code ZAKURILIUS10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.